guess the other thing is that I think it has to go through all phases and of study, and the drug company is more than willing to push forward, go through all the phases of uh, unnecessary to get FDA approval. It's just that they run into problems like we all do as far as financial backing, and I think that's been a big problem with them finding a partner in order to help pay for a big study. I have a couple of questions about the flu shot. <coughs> Should we take flu shots uh, or pneumonia shots? In general, we recommend that, that, that you do get the vaccinations um, for, for most people with myasthenia. So in general, we, we recommend that people go ahead and get the vaccinations. Um, again, with the one um, caveat is that um, the live attenuated virus, where, where they use um, the nasal vaccines tend to be those, those, those live attenuated ones. Those are the ones, the intranasal ones would be the ones that I would avoid. Okay, I have a few questions here. How many or what is the percentage of patients getting metoxamab that have a remission and how soon do they say the remission? You know, I hesitate to make too many conclusions about rituximab because, like we said before, all the data is in pan. Got another one here. Well, prednisone skin coloration, discoloration changes and problems clear up by itself. Yeah, there definitely are skin changes with prednisone, thinning of the skin, discoloration, easily bruising, because your skin gets very thin on the prednisone. But um, as the dose decreases and if you or and you can come off the prednisone, then these uh, problems do get better. So I have another uh, prednisone question. Uh, why is it that prednisone is usually used in a long-term way with MG, but for other autoimmune diseases like Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, it is only used for brief periods, uh, for example, two to three months and then taper off? <coughs> I think the reason is that those other diseases are associated with inflammation tissue inflammation, so ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, even, even uh, rheumatoid arthritis, there's tissue inflammation there, and the prednisone sort of dampens that tissue inflammation. What about muscle spasm that, that while you're sleeping? Yeah, that's a, that, that's a common, relatively common complaint in, my, in uh, patients with myasthenia. Sometimes it's related to mestinon use, because mestinon sometimes can cause uh, muscle cramps. So in those in those situations, sometimes if you make sure that you don't take the mestinone too too um, uh, soon in relation to when you go to bed, um, uh, that might help. I've got one here that says anything about anti-musk. <laughs> so so I'll tell you. Um, um, so probably about. Um, so 85% of people with myasthenia have um, antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor. Of the remaining patients with generalized myasthenia, so not ocular myasthenia, the remaining patients with generalized myasthenia, about 40% of those will have anti-musk antibodies. Now some people with anti-musk antibodies have disease that looks just like uh, a patient with antibodies to the acetylcholine receptor. But there are some people with anti-musk myasthenia who have different characteristics to their disease. So um, in general, these people have more involvement of their swallowing muscles, more involvement of their respiratory muscles, more involvement of their truncal muscles, um, uh, and facial muscles. Um, and and sometimes they have little or no double vision or droopy eyelids, although many of them do, but it's not as prominent as, as uh, uh, patients with, um, uh, with uh, acetylcholine receptor antibodies. But as far as the immunosuppressive agents, they respond to prednisone, they respond to CELSEP, they respond to, um, uh, to other typical immunosuppressive agents uh, what is the percentage of patients who go into remission with thymectomies who have hyperplasia of the thymus gland? 
So that's a, that's a good question. So people who have hypoplasia of the thymus gland typically have onset of myasthenia um, uh, before the age of 40. They typically have acetylcholine receptor antibodies. Um, and, th and those patients um, uh, are the ones where most people um, are, are likely to consider thymectomy, even if they don't have a thymoma. Okay, the reason for that is, I showed you that slide in, 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 in my talk that shows that, that, that the thymus in these people with hyperplastic or, or enlarged thymus glands, the thymus expresses acetylcholine receptor and actually can, um, uh, the, the cells of the thymus gland can produce acetylcholine receptor antibodies. So the thought would be, at least theoretically, that um, removing the thymus gland in these people would have a beneficial effect on the disease. If you look at, at all the studies that have been published, and none of, this, none of the studies are controlled. They're all sort of, people had thymectomy and someone looked back at a large group of patients and, and looked to, to see what happened. In general, if you summarize those studies, about 40 to 50% of those people go into remission. Um, uh, but again, the, the definition of remission um, uh, differs from one study to another. I have a question on the long-term problems of, of cell sept, like what happens if you've been on it for 10, 20 years. In larger studies, in rheumatoid arthritis, um, you know, there has, and also in transplant patients, there has been an association um, with malignancy, especially like uh, lymphoma. But in, you know, we don't have specific numbers or risks for myasthenic patients who are on these. Here's a question. I have a few questions on T cells. Are they part of the test for thyroid disease? I've been curious since my thyroid tests have fluctuated since I am on Mestamet. So um, the answer is they're not part of the test for thyroid disease. There really is no routine blood test that, um, uh, that looks at T cell numbers or functions. Um, uh, it's mainly done, um, uh, done uh, for research. Um, as far as uh, thyroid disease is concerned, there clearly is an association of thyroid disease and myasthenia. So um, uh, patients do have, uh, patient, pa patients with myasthenia are more likely to have autoimmune thyroid disease. Um, and so, um, while I'm not sure about the effect of mestinon on uh, thyroid function, sure, certainly, um, uh, myasthenia can be uh, associated with, uh, uh, with thyroid dysfunction. And it, as a matter of fact, when we make the diagnosis of myasthenia, we routinely check thyroid functions because it's, uh, it's one of the common autoimmune associations with, uh, uh, with myasthenia. Uh, 